13 verse 1, again. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. How do you know it's red? It represents the color of Esau, and it's according to Genesis 25 and 25. You're shaking your head, yes. He didn't give me the priest of Revelation 12. He just omitted that. Because in Revelation 12, it tells you that the dragon is what? Red. Red. Then you go with that. You over here shaking your head. See what annoys me? Go ahead, Amon. What is the seven heads? What is the seven heads? It represents um, the year. Stand up. Um, they represent the European Union, which um, is Greek. Is that what he says? I'll get any video. No. Somebody have a seat, Amon. The seven heads does not represent the European Union. Mm, Phil. The major empires of Esau start with Greece, Rome, Spain, France, Germany, Russia, and Great Britain. Did you say France? Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Germany and Russia. So what are the ten? Stick your stand up back though. So what are the ten horns? Union is a common markets in NATO. All right. The ten horns is the ten common markets, also called the European Union, also called NATO. You see them mentioned in the news all the time. Okay? What verse we at? Verse 2. All right, go ahead. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Read it again. And the beast was Stop. And the beast. Who is this beast talking about, Ezekiel? Somebody help Ezekiel Phil. Uh, Barnabas, please. Esau. Esau. This beast is the beast with seven heads and ten horns. So John here in verse 2 is giving, an, he's abbreviating. He says, the beast. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Okay, now. Many of your Bibles, many Bibles will precept you back to Daniel 7. However, it's not saying that this beast is made up of the Persians and the Medes. Or what was one of the other in Daniel 7? The Babylonians. What else? Persians and Greeks. And Rome. And Rome. Right. It's not saying that these other names, remember it tells you the color of this beast. The color of the beast is what? Right. right. So it's talking about one race of people who have attributes like them other empires, but there's not them. Like the leopard, whose symbol was the leopard in Daniel 7? Uh, the Greeks. The Greeks. So they have attributes of the Greeks. The Greeks is a part of them. So guess what? The Greeks were red also. So we know the Greeks is a part of this dragon. Go ahead. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet as the feet of a bear. Now, if you follow your precept of Daniel 7, who was the bear? Yes. The Persian and the Medes. But we know that this empire is not the Persian and the Medes. Right, brothers? Yes. I gotta scratch my head. Who took the symbol of the bear in this time and age? Yes. Russia. Russia took that symbol of the, of the bear. Go ahead. Um, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Now in Daniel 7, who had the symbol of the lion? Abiel. The Babylonians. Right. Babylonians was Ethiopia. But this is not talking about Ethiopia because it already told you this great red dragon. So it's talking about one race. Keep that in mind. Esau. What empire took, what Edomite empire took the symbol of the lion? Yahshua. Great, great. Right. Everybody got that? Oh, yes, Write it down, because some of y'all just looking up at me. Like there's a, I know I got pimples, but come on. They can't be that big. Where we at? <laughs> so, Go ahead. And the dragon gave him his power. And the dragon gave this red dragon, and who's the dragon there? That's right. 
dragon, the dragon is the devil. The devil, the spiritual demon Satan gave Esau their power. You ever want to know how did this man figure out how much fuel it takes to get to the moon? How did this man figure that out? How did this man know what it takes to come to, to, to construct a, a vehicle to get there and a suit there to endure go. out there? Huh? How did this man create a weapon that can annihilate everybody? We got part of our again. And the dragon gave him his power. That's how. That's how. The dragon gave him his power. <clears throat> Give me that Matthew 4. So that kills all you Steve Jobs fans. Uh, they got a dollar. I hope I don't see none of you Negroes buying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody's saying what a genius and how smart he is, and y'all forgetting he's a devil. Don't be impressed with that man. Mm -hmm. Luke 4, verse 6. Six. Six. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Read some from five. And the devil, taking him up into an high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. So Satan showed Christ all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Go ahead. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee. All this power will I give thee. Go ahead. And the glory of them. For what is delivered unto me, and for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. So Satan told Christ, if you worship me, I'll make you rule of all the kingdoms of the world. Go back to Revelation now. I just wanted y'all to see and understand that part at the bottom of verse 2 in Revelation 13. Read that again in the dragon. Revelation 13 and verse 2. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So in order for Esau to get that seat and power and great authority, they had to do what? Serve the devil, sir. That's right. Worship, Worship the devil. The devil. Worship the devil. Worship the devil. Worship the, let me stop saying it, because somebody will edit that part and say, see? Watch your hands, too. Watch your hands. He said, worship the devil. Yeah. Watch your hand gestures, too. That's why when you look at, uh, on your dollar bills, you got all kind of Masonic symbols on it. When you look at Washington, D.C., it's made up of a pentagram. pentagram. The streets form the goat head. That's not by accident. It's by design. <clears throat> okay? We don't. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. One of the heads that was wounded to death, death was Rome. Write that down. Rome fell in what year? And by whose hand? Uh, Rome fell in 193 AD. And the brother that led the way was, um, how do you pronounce his name? Titanius? Titanius. Right. Very good. Write that down. Rome fell in 193 AD. You know what's, what's good? What was the name of the movie where they show him? But they got him as Esau. What Gladiator. Gladiator. Not Gladiator. Let's go. Let's go Gladiator. I want the old one. Uh, oh, 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 it's the fall of the Roman Empire. That's it. Thank you. The fall of the Roman Empire. Because there's a, a short scene. And that was Septimius. But they go, here comes Septimius Severus. Then the movie goes off. Then it goes off. But. What they got on Septimius on his shield, he got the hexagram. They're trying to say, they know he's a so-called Jew. Right. I mean, he's a, he was a Jew, that's so-called. But they're trying to say he was a white man of their people. But he was a black man. And when you get Time Life books about the Roman Empire, it tells you that Septimius Severus, it says he was of African descent, but he was not African. He was in the Roman Empire. He was a Jew. Okay. Right. The name of the book that you uh, trying to mention was Imperial Rome mm -hmm. by Time Life Books, and in that book they have it's amazing because in that book they show the um, if I'm not mistaken they show the te the tetrarch the four rulers of Rome on the, standing in the uh, piazza, and it's got 
Diocletian. Mm -hmm. They have Maximilian. Maximilian. Ma Maximilian. Constantius and Septimius. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the nose is shot. The nose is knocked off and all of that. Oh, now they got the picture of them there. Then when you go to another part of the book, they got them as a crack. Right. They show a bust of an Edomite head. But when you read in the sentence, when you read in the writing, it says of African, says descent. African descent. Mm -hmm. wow. Just mean that just means he was black. They, that's for their people to read. They're not figuring that Negro. Right. We're gonna sit down and go, hey. Right. They're not figuring. We're gonna figure this out. We that dumb. We that we don't know. <laughs> That book is heavy. Uh, it is. In that the same book, not to deviate, but in that same book, they have the picture, the pictures, the terracottas, and the wall mosaics of the of the gladiators fighting the animals, the lions and the tigers in the arenas, and they got them as black people. Right. I mean, clear. Exactly. Y'all, what's up? Just bring the book in. Take yeah. it out your safe and bring it in. All right. <laughs> I'm not have to do that. He got the book. <laughs> he got it in the lock and key. Y'all can order them books on Amazon. Order them books. You know? And you know, when we tell people to order the books, I'm going to tell you, Esau moves quick. Their people know how to roll together. We the ones that don't know how to roll together. And I watch with my own eyes how they pull the Apocrypha out of Barnes & Noble. Yeah. They used to be on the shelf. They used to be able to go and buy them like nothing. Now they gone. They gotta look in the computer and say, I'll order it for you. Mm. Y'all see that? So come on, where we at? Verse four, three. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. So, wounded to death meaning Rome fell in 193 AD. Write that down, go ahead. And his deadly wound was healed. And his deadly wound was healed. Who can explain that? And his deadly wound was healed. Look, one, two, three. Oh, look at that. Look at that again. We'll come class. Zakat. That's when uh, Rome came back up as America. Time to see. I didn't like the way you said it. <laughs> Joshua. Josiah, I mean. Josiah, Josiah, Josiah. Rome came back to Spain. Have a seat. That's right. Rome came back as America. Took up the Have a seat. <laughs> you saying that Rome came back as America? Yeah. Right. I want the big. Maybe I'm not wording it right. You but I can question. hear it. They forgot the question. Got it. Got it. Forget the question. They forgot the question. All right, Ramai, help us. The Renaissance between the three parties, 1453, was right. Spain. That's what we wanted. That's what we wanted. 1453, the white man came back in power. With, uh, and they were, that era was called the Renaissance. Because when ancient Rome fell, it was called what? The Dark Ages. The Dark Ages. When the white man came back in power, 1453, okay, they conquered, what was the first place they got? Constantinople. Constantinople. Then you had, they had Spain, they, got, they sacked Constantinople, and they, they got... Uh, 1492. I'm not I'm not there yet. They got Rome. Those were one of the first those are the first three. They got Spain, Rome, then and Constantinople. I'm three. They took. That was 1453. There's a movie starring Lawrence Fishburne. Othello. Called what was the name of that movie? Othello. Othello. Where he's one of the last of the Moors. I believe it was in Spain, right? It was in Spain. And all the Edomites are plotting to get him out, to kill him, and get him out of Spain. And his best friend, Esau. So y'all want to get those movies, look at them. Because it's not meant for our people to, to even look at them things. We're not interested. You tell a black man, look at Othello. Othello? Nigga, please, I ain't looking at that. His mind. His mind. Mo movies like that were sell in the ghetto for about a dollar. Right. And nobody still won't buy them. Mm -hmm. You understand? But we'll put a pair of Nike tennis shoes $250. Where's they said that? Two hundred and fifty dollars, <laughs> and they'll try for your mama. You'll hold your newborn baby in line in the freezing and cold, so you get a pill. Yep. And they'll lick the under the sneaker. Oh man. That's right. They'll lick the sole of the sneaker, right, Ramon? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Esau is making mockery of us over that on CNN, bro. Mm. They're try they, they use the word phenomenon. They want to know what is the sensation around these sneakers. Mm. You gotta ask a Negro. Exactly. Yes. Is this the uh, 
Same thing as in Malachi chapter 1 and 4. We're getting there. Yes, we're getting there. Just give me a second. So read that again. And I saw one, Revelation 13, verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. So now, Azariah, Malachi 1, get that. You read it for me. Because that's exactly what this is making reference to in the book of Malachi, chapter 1. So in your Bible, next to verse 3 here in Revelation 13, you want to put Malachi, chapter 1, 1 through 4. Read verse 4. Start from 1 so we know the subject. All right. Malachi, chapter 1, verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Verse 2. I have loved you, said the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein has thou loved us? Can they hear him on the internet? Uh, well, they shouldn't be able to. Okay, go ahead and explain. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Hey. Said the Lord. Say the Lord. Yet I love Jacob, verse 3, and I hated Esau, and have laid his mountains and his heritage waste. See that? And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste. That's 193 AD, with the rise of Septimius Severus, the fall of Rome. Okay? And from that time period, the Dark Ages, we forced Esau into the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Read that again. Verse 3, and I, and I hated Esau and made his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Verse 4, where is Edom say we are imp impoverished? Where is Edom says we are impoverished? We are destitute. We have nothing. Go ahead. But we will return. We will return. We will return and conquer them. And build the desolate places. And build the desolate places. That's the Renaissance era. Go ahead. Thus said the Lord of hosts. They shall build. They shall build from the Renaissance 1453 up until now. Go ahead. But I will throw down. But God has promised he will throw down all the empires they have set up again. That was it. Everybody understand that? Yes. yes. All right. Back to Revelation 13. What verse we at? Four? Verse 4. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. See that? And they worshiped the dragon. They worshiped the devil, which gave power unto hey, the beast. Hey, you skip some. Go back to three. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. That part. That's the part that was left out. Go ahead. <laughs> So this thing was amazing. That this no this impoverished people came and conquered the greatest nation that ruled the known world. Oh, y'all see that? Mm -hmm. What do you say, y'all? You see that part where it says <clears throat> and that you just read in Malachi, where it said, uh, where well, we will return and build the desolate places. They're saying that we're gonna rise against what the most I said. They said we're gonna build despite what the most I said. Mm -hmm. That's why at the bottom of uh, three, all the world wondered after the beast. Because right now they're getting the glory. People are worshiping them now. They're all over. They love him to death. They're saying, they can, go marry him. He, he'll take care of you. They love him. <laughs> Have his babies. Have his babies. They love him. The most I said, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill everything. Exactly. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. All right, read on. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with them? Who is able to make war with them? What that part mean? Why would they ask that question? Because it's the nations that saying, Who is able to make war with him? Why would the nations make a statement like that? Robin. Because they look at the so-called white man as powerful. Why? Because they, they look at him as God. Why? Why? There's something, there's a verse somewhere that explains that. <laughs> Zakai, why? Uh, yeah, exactly. Because um, um, Esau has great military might. America has great military might. 
Africans got a military. Filipinos got a military. I'm talking about the nuclear weapons. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Oh, they got the weapons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The nuclear weapons. Yeah, they have the nuclear weapons. They have 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 Put a little notion next to a little note there. Now watch this. Uh, bear with me a second. Let me see if I want to go here. I want to show y'all something. No. Nope, I'm going to go here. We don't. Verse 5. Verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Forty and two months. It was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and black. What does this mouth break down to? A mouth. His mouth is called what today? Yahshua. His media. His media. That's how he communicates. Okay? There was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. Okay? We're going to get into the blasphemies in the next verse. We don't. In verse 5. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. 40 and 2 months breaks down to what? How many years and what? Three years and a half. Three years and a half. Why does it say power was given unto him? The three and a half years equals what, Ramiah? 350. 350 years. Why does it say and power was given unto him to continue for 350 years? That's what the 40 and 2 months breaks down to. 42 months equals three years and six months. It's three and a half years. Why? Why until that point? What what happened next? So, Joel. Also, I said Elijah the prophet. Mm. Let, me, let me rephrase the question. What, ha what happened during that time? Oh, um, it's during the time? We were, Israel's in captivity. Okay. Alright. I want something else. Um, Yo, I'm, I'm going to go back to your first answer. Give me Revelation 11. 11. Give me that. Revelation. That's where you was hitting that, right, Joel? Yes. Revelation 11. 11. Revelation 11. 11. And after three days and a half. See? Here it's saying three days and a half. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing as the 42 months. Same thing, right? The same thing, three years and six months, okay, which equals 350 years. Read it again. And after three days and then half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet. That's Israel coming back. The truth being pushed in the earth. That's the time period we're in right now. Is that it? And great fear fell upon them which saw them. Give me Revelation 2.9. Revelations 2 verse 9. I know thy works in tribulation, in poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Right. So the name Judah, who knows what, whose name is in that name? Abiel. Judah to hell, the American black. No, that's not what I asked you. Jew. Now you're not listening to my question. Whose name? <laughs> is in the name Judah. That's my question. Leo. Um, God. Right. He gave us his name, Yahawada. Okay. I was trying to find something uh, real quick, not to not to back up far, but the bottom of verse five. Uh, where it says, and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months, right? We got the understanding that that's talking about three and a half. We went to Revelation 11 and 11, which is correct. Uh, we also understand that that um, 40 and two months, that, that 42 months also equals a time and a times and the dividing of times. So when the Most High said that that power was given unto him to rule for forty and two, what is it? Continue forty and two months. The same thing is written in Daniel seven twenty-five, the bottom of seven twenty-five, where it says, "And they shall be given into his hand until a time 
and times and the dividing of time. So he gave this man an extra time period to do his thing. Why? Because Israel was going to have to serve him during that same time. So when that time is over, that's when we're going to wake up. That's what we're doing now. That's what we're doing now. Exactly. Y'all see the connection? Right. Yes. I have a precept for... No, mm -mm. We'll never get through it. Revelation 13. Back to where you was at. Revelation 13, verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. So, he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. He says he is God. He sets himself up as God. Go ahead. To blaspheme his name. And he blasphemed his name. Anytime you think of the name of God, he shows his face. Okay, he took the name Jew to himself. That's why we went to Revelation 2.9. Go ahead. And his tabernacle. And his tabernacle. Give me that in Ezekiel 35. Here's the proof. Right, here's your friend right here. This guy, is, they said this is Judah, Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah, this cat. This is one of the seven heads right here. <laughs> yes. Notice how the image got red here. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ezekiel 35 and 12 about the um, tabernacle. Ezekiel 35 and 12. In verse 12. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord. And that I have heard all thy blasphemies. I have heard all thy blasphemies. Come on. Which thou hast spoken mm -hmm. against the mountains of, of Israel. Against the mountains of Israel. This is the tabernacle. Go ahead. Saying they are laid desolate. They are given us to consume. Mm. Y'all see that? So that's the blasphemy. They said the land of Israel is left desolate. It's given us to consume. So they stole the land and took it as theirs and said, we are the Jews. We are the children of God. That's what they did. Go ahead. Um, Thus with your mouth ye have boasted against me and have multiplied your words against me. I have heard them. Right. Boasted open his mouth against the Lord. Exactly. So he boasted his mouth. Open his mouth against the Lord. Go back now to Revelation 13. Revelation 13. Five. Verse 5. And there was given no, oh, six. six. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Right. That links with get 2 Thessalonians 2 and 4. <clears throat> you think about the most high Christ, the angels, he got himself up. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 4. Who, who opposed it and exalted, exalted himself above all that is called God. So that is worship. So that he asked God, sitting in the temple of God, Showing himself that he is God. So wherever you go, you want to learn about God, you got to go to the white man's churches, his religious institutions. And he got his images all throughout there. His ministers are set up to teach about his image. Even when you got our people as pastors of those religious institutions, they're still teaching Esau's image. Okay, everybody understand that? Okay. That was verse 4. Let's go back to Revelation 13. Revelation 13. And verse 7. Verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. So this dragon with seven heads and ten horns made war with the saints. Go ahead. And to overcome them. And to overcome them. Go ahead. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So not only did this dragon with seven heads, where one head was wounded and came back in power, they conquered Israel, and not just us, they conquered all the other races. Okay, let's look at Deuteronomy 20. Let's deal with that first part. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Deuteronomy 20, first let's prove the saints. Where would we go to prove the saints? Hananiah, where would you go? Psalms 148, 14. Very good. Let's get that first. Psalms 148, verse 14 proves who the saints are. Because going to Esau's religious institutions, they'll tell you anybody is a saint of God. Anybody that believes in white man Jesus is a saint. But that's not proven in the Bible. Psalms 148, verse 14. Psalms 148, verse 14. Mm -hmm. 
He exalted, he also exalted the horn of his people. The praise of all his saints. The praise of all his saints. Even of the even of the children of Israel. The word even means indeed of the children of Israel. A people near unto him. So praise, go ahead. Praise ye the Lord. So the only saints are the Israelites. Everybody understand that? Y'all see that? Yes. So don't let nobody confuse you. Go back to Revelation. No, I'm sorry. Go to Deuteronomy 28, 48 now. Now that we know who the saints are, it said that this great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns would overcome the saints. There's many precepts you can go to. We go to Deuteronomy 28 just to make it simple for you. Deuteronomy 28, 48. verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he, Wait, go ahead, go ahead. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he had destroyed thee. My question is to Steve. Thank you. In that verse, Steve, what is the word used in that verse for the great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns? One word. Enemies. Very good. Very good. You knew that get alive? Mm -hmm. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring me into Egypt again with ships. Cargo slave ships. The word Egypt there is means what? Bondage. Go ahead. By the way whereof I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. Amana. In that verse, where is it mentioned? The great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns. What is the word in verse 68 for them? Look at Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Like I told y'all, when you get to the book of Revelation, it's going to use other words. It's going to, use, it's going to change the words up on you. You got to be able to connect the dots. Revelation says the great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns. This dragon would overcome the saints. Moses used another word, Amada. Read verse 6 to 8 for Amada again. The brother who wants to be loved. And the Lord shall bring me into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. So Amada, where is the great red dragon in that verse? What is Moses calling him? Enemies, very good. Gaba, do you see that? Okay. Let's go back to Revelation now, 13. Revelation 13, verse seven. 7. Verse 7 again. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Right. That's why this country, America, I'll use the so-called why, I'll use that term. They rule everybody. The other nations don't move without their say-so. Okay, watch this, go ahead. <clears throat> and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Stop. Now, give me that thing, that was up. In case, because this is letting you know. It says, in case somebody want to be stupid and say, well, that might be the Chinese. Right. That might be the Africans or the East Indians. Because you get some Christians, uh, you got... What's his name? The fat guy with glasses. What's his name? <laughs> John Hagee. John Hagee. Jack Van Impey. Um, Joel Steen. Joel Steen going to prophecies. Those are the two main Edomites that I can remember that go into prophecies. Oh. Benny, Hinn. Benny Hinn. You also got, what's the guy? Uh, Perry Stone. They say, this is Babylon. They'll bring up, they say, hey, Babylon today is called, where is it at? Iraq. Huh? Iraq. 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 And they'll go, see, everyone's worshiping. Is everyone worshiping Iraq? No. I want y'all to look at this picture good. Right. <laughs> Read that verse again. Does it look like an Iraqi? <laughs> Read that all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Everybody is worshiping this. You will not find a place, even in Arabia. 
this you will find this image somewhere in somebody's house. Wow. <laughs> as outlawed as it is in the Muslim ones, you will find some of them worshiping that guy. Yes. Uh, the other day I was in the cabin and this dude was straight up African and he had a picture of Caesar and Jay in his car. Listening to Bible scriptures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see some Puerto Ricans with them on, his, on their uh, headlights. Can y'all ain't see that thing? Yeah. I'm like, what the hell? Who got it combed in the headlight? <laughs> they got it inside the car now. <laughs> on the dashboard. On the dashboard when they rocking with their music. <laughs> the hell is like, this? Like, they like they're talking <laughs> to each other. <laughs> <laughs> like they're on stage. Back. Read that again. <laughs> And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. So you gotta highlight that part. Worship him. Worship him. Everybody's worshiping the image of the so-called white man as God in Christ. So there's no, you don't you don't gotta be the smartest dude on the earth to know who everybody's worshiping. Hold up a black man's image and a Chinese image and a white man's image. Ask anybody who's being worshipped today as God in Christ. Everybody knows the white man. But you might meet that one knucklehead who's scared to say it. I don't know. You just want to smack him in the head. Go ahead. Ask a child. Yeah, you can ask a child. Yeah, they don't know who to say. They'll tell you the truth. You know, I've seen on one of these NBC pro on one of these programs where they would uh, test the inferiority of the children. Remember, like the one we looked at before. Yeah. And they held a picture of that, and the child said, "Oh, that's Jesus." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows who this is. Or <laughs> they think this is. Yeah. I was gonna say, um, they're saying shower worship, and that's future tense, right? So that yeah, that's that's it. It was future it. from the time when they came out of the Renaissance. And that's what we're gonna read down. What I want y'all to see in Revelation 13, verse 1 through 8, is gonna be repeated again in verse 11 down. He's just gonna give more detail. Come on. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of the light of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. Because there's many people that give their heart, their soul, they will die for this image. Read on. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. There is the patience and the faith of the saints. What is verse 10 making reference to? From what we've just read, Azariah. No. Sarah. From what we've read in this chapter, let me word it like that. In this chapter, for him to say what he said in verse 10, read it again. Oh. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed. He that he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Verse 10 is making reference to what in this chapter? Very good. Verse 7 says, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. That's why verse 10 says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So from 10 to 7 to do it, I mean 28, verse, we went 48, 6, and there's other places you can precept to show what this man did to us. Come on. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the, out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. So now, I made a statement earlier. I said, verse one through eight is repeated, verse 11 down, in more detail. Now I'm gonna see who's thinking. Read verse 11 again. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Where is that mentioned in this chapter? <coughs> Where is that mentioned in this chapter? Only Imar, Bezalel, now let's try it, Apari. Um, in verse 6. Yeah. No. Read verse 11 again. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Hananiah. Verse uh, 3. Very good. And I saw one of his heads as were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. This beast came back in power again. Okay? So John is saying the same thing like I'm telling y'all. He's repeating using different words. Pay close attention. Now verse 11 again. 
And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. He's going to get more detail now. So now, he said, this, this beast, where is it at? This beast which came up out of earth, he had two horns like a lamb. So what? Why does it have like a lamb? He portrays himself as what? This man portrays himself as what? Phil. As Christ. As Christ. Give me another word. You're right. Stay with that word. No, no. Stay with Christ. As the sacrificial. No, 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 no. They say they're what? Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. At Bezalel. No. I'm up. Leon. Anointed. No. Close. You were close. You were close. I want a word. A part. No. The white man will walk on the street and say I'm the Savior. He don't say that. What does he say he is? Oh, Steve, ah, I want another word, easy word. Christians. Christian. Oh. They say America is a Christian society. Not a society. A God. Wait, wait, wait. Take out your dollar bill. What does it say? In God we trust. In God we trust. They're, they're saying they are a Christian society. They say Christopher Columbus. What does it say? When he oh, said, when he stole America, they say he what? The name, the name, of, the name of Christianity. He found his place in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yeah, it's a ship. Okay, the Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria, and the good ship. And the good ship Jesus came later. They say this is a Christian nation. That's why it says he had two horns like a lamb. Okay, everybody see that? Watch this. Verse twelve. No, eleven again. Verse eleven. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Mm. So he portrays himself Christian, but God says he spake as a dragon. Let's take one of the Christian, let's take one of the Christian principles of the United States of America. Is it the Bill of Rights or the Constitution? I always get them things mixed up. The First Amendment. Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. What's the next one? Freedom of religion. They say these are Christian principles. Are those Christian principles? Nope. You will not find freedom of speech or freedom of religion in the Holy Bible. You will not find it. But everyone thinks that when the founding fathers, what's them devil's names? George Washington. Washington, Franklin, Jefferson, Jefferson, John Hancock with the big signature. They said they, fought, they went into a prayer vigil. That's what they say. They sat down and prayed and fasted. And they came up with those things. And everybody believes that this is God sent. <laughs> Freedom of religion. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 7. Is it 7 and 7? Yes, 7. That's what God said about the religions of the other nations. Deuteronomy 5, 7 verse 5. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. See, do y'all see that? There was no such thing. There is no such thing with the Most High's freedom of religion. Because when we rolled, the Most High said, destroy all those religions out there. Destroy them. And when Christ returns, it's going to happen again. You let somebody open their mouth and say Buddha. It'll be the last word they ever utter. Yes. It's a known fact now that those dudes were all um, satanic witches. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. but, people, but in school, they don't believe that. Yeah, they, our, yeah. our people really don't believe that they were satanic witches. They don't believe uh, that. Yeah, you know this, this, these modern days, man, how they use it. They say, don't talk about the other men religion. He's not talking about your religion. Mm -hmm. That's how they use it. Exactly. Back to Revelation 13. You know, you know what's amazing? The people's process of common sense has been destroyed in this country. That's right. In particular. Because how in the world could you talk about freedom of religion when God has a purpose recorded in the Bible? As if God is going to allow people to determine the outcome of God's word. Right. That's showing you that people's thinking, their brain got to be up there behind. I can't understand how you're going to talk about freedom of religion. You got to have your own determination of what the Bible is talking about when there's a plan and, and a course on which the prophecy is going to go. Mm -hmm. Nobody is going to upset those plans. Those plans are going to happen exactly the way the Most High said they're going to happen. Right. So, and to call him the Almighty on top of it. If he's the Almighty, that means all of the other gods are garbage. That means all the other plans and the ways are garbage. So there's no freedom here. Exactly. 
Read verse Revelation 13 again. I want y'all to see this thing. Read verse 3 again. Verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. So now, what head was wounded? Rome. 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 How was it healed? During the Renaissance. Renaissance, 1453. From that time period, 1453, what nation sprouted out of that? Oh. From 1453 on up. One nation that was not a nation before, but forged itself into a conglomerate. A mix of all other nations. Steve. The United States. Right. The United States of America came out of that. 1776. So don't forget that. I want to keep that in mind. Read verse 11 now. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. So verse 11 is saying the same thing as verse 3. He's just using different words. Read 11 again. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two, and he had two horns. Like a lamb. So this new, this other beast is America. That's came from the Renaissance era and forged itself a more perfect union to establish justice and how's it go? The American way, something like that. Freedom, justice, domestic quality. tranquility. There was a song when I was young and we all had to sing. I can't remember it now. But uh, read 11 again. <laughs> and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. Like a lamb, because they say this is a Christian society. Uh, Amada, do you know the attributes of a lamb? Is a lamb aggressive or passive? Passive. passive. That's why Christ called us the lost sheep of the house of Israel. America says they are Christian, which means they're supposedly a passive nation. But read the next part. And he spake as a dragon. But it's not a, it's not a lamb. It's really a dragon. This is not a passive nation. This is an aggressive nation. Come on. And, the, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. Read verse 3 again. And he exercised Verse 3 again. Oh, verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. Rome was wounded, 193 AD. It was conquered. It fell. Go ahead. And his deadly wound was healed. And his deadly wound was healed. The Renaissance era. Go ahead. And all the world wondered after the beast. Now, verse 12. Verse 12. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. What is he talking about there? We just read the answer. Ezekiel. Rome. Rome. He exercised all the power of the first beast before him. Rome. Rome. That's why the days are your week. These are Roman names. Monday, Tuesday, January, February, okay? When you go throughout uh, the libraries, you see images of Roman and Greek gods, Greco-Roman gods everywhere. July, Julius Caesar, August. Exactly. Who had the hand up? Okay. Architects in the United States is based on Rome. It's all based off of Roman architecture. All based on Roman architecture. Talk architecture. Thank you. Roman numerals are in place. Read that again. Verse 12 here? Yep. Verse 12. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. Now, was ancient Rome a passive nation? Oh, no. Very aggressive nation. They cut them all about conquering. Right. So God's letting you know, this new empire that's going to come up out of them, same attribute. It's really a dragon. They say they're Christian, don't fall for it. Come on. And cause that the earth and them which draw therein to worship the first beast. To worship the first beast, go ahead. Whose deadly wound was healed. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Remember I showed y'all this earlier. Where did this image originate from? Uh, Phil. Renaissance when the Pope had a uh, Out of what empire? Rome. Rome! Rome! Caesar Borgia. Pope Alexander the Sixth of Rome. Let me say it again, maybe I forgot. Pope Alexander the Sixth of Rome. His son, Caesar Borgia, was chosen as the model of the Renaissance, Jesus Christ. Read that again. Verse 12. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and called it the earth and them which draw therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Right, whose deadly wound was healed, because out of the Renaissance fought, came the United States of America. Go ahead. Y'all son? Yeah. So you said what it says it caused him to worship the first beast? 
because that's where this like the elders bring it out. That's who you're worshiping. Mm -hmm. you, when you worship this man, you're not worshiping somebody that walked in our time. Right. You're worshiping a man that walked in Rome. That's who you were. Oh, that's Jesus. You, you're worshiping a man that walked around in Rome, a demon. That's right. That's what that is. This is in. This has got their brain, their brain cells clogged up. This image is all in it. I had to bring this prisoner from home because if we don't have enough of these prisoners in there, so I had to bring this in. I'm going to scan it to make sure that we have plenty of this to go around so we can beat on it. We'll get those, those cells straightened out in your head. <laughs> Read on where we at? Verse 13. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. So now, it said he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Uh, Ezekiel. It's talking about uh, the bombs they dropped on Nagasaki. They said that it looked like a fire came from heaven that day. The, at the dropping of the atom bomb. World War II. 1945. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Here's my question. Where did we bring that up about? There you go. I didn't want you to forget that. Oh. Get a line. Verse 4. Where it says that the, the dragon is going to give the beast power. Mm -hmm. And it says, who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him? Right. right. Very good. But there's something else. I want you to look at this verse also. No, that was it. That was it. That's good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Now, back to verse 13 again. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, mm -hmm. and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. Notice what is calling that fire from heaven. What is the Bible calling it? Miracles. miracles. <clears throat> Remember we read earlier who gave them their power? The dragon. Right. The dragon gave them their power. Read that again. Um, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. So now, how did it deceive them that dwell on the earth? When that bomb dropped and those two cities was decimated, the nation said what? Azariah. They said God is with uh, Esau. Right, God is with them. God is with them. God bless America. And the fighting stopped. And notice who Esau dropped it on. They didn't drop it on Hitler. Mm -hmm. Why not? He, he caused all the problems. How many started? They said, don't drop it on our people. We gonna need them. Drop it on them little funny slant eyed cats over there. Drop it on them. That's how Esau gets down. I guess when they dropped the bomb, all of the stores that sold these pictures sold out. They went out like those Nike shoes. Yeah. <laughs> they were buying them up like crazy. <laughs> um, also, after that, after the, the nuclear bomb, <coughs> the reason why they didn't bomb Germany is because, if you notice, look it up, in NASA, the majority of, uh, of uh, uh, scientists in NASA Germany. were German, from Germany. Yeah, right. that made them. Wow. And Esau, I tell you, Esau is about his people. That's right. They're about his people. The only ones that kill each other is us. That's, yeah. We're the only dumb nation that does that. We that again. 13. And he make it, he do it great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, come on. and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, meaning his other European allies. Mm -hmm. Because remember in verse 1, it said a beast having seven heads. Y'all see that? We don't? Saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast. That they should make an image to the beast. Now he's jumping back. John is jumping back in time. Letting you know. Okay, read it again. Um, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Stop. Where do we read that? Yes, Josiah. 
Very good. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Okay, so John, like I said, he's repeating the same thing, but he's breaking it down in more details now. Uh, Brother Netanyahu, uh, yeah, you remember when you said, uh, when you quote the Bible, when it said, all nations in the side of the beast. Uh -huh. When these nations see what Esau has done, they say, this is my ruler right now. This is who I choose to rule the world. Yep. That, that's what they're saying in their mind because that's why he set up the image. So they can show their tribute to that image. You understand? You say it, now show your tribute to America. You understand? Exactly. Read 14 again. And he deceived them that dwelt on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwelt on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. So now he's jumping back to the Renaissance time period because that's where the image came from, okay? That they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword which fell in 193 AD and did live. Live when? In the Renaissance era. 1453. That image is where this white image of Jesus Christ came from. The Renaissance era, go ahead. 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. So now, who was the model and who was the artist? The model for Jesus and the artist. Barack Bar. Okay, the model for Jesus was Cesar Borgia. Yes. The artist was Leonardo da Vinci. Right, the artist was Leonardo da Vinci. Read it again, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Whose life did they give Caesar, this guy, Amado? Who did they tell you that this is? Right, that's the life they gave him. No longer do they, they don't tell you the truth and say, this is actually Caesar right. Boger. Right. They go, mm -mm. this is Jesus. Right. Wait, 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 wait. The pamphlet itself is telling you. Look what they got written on it. <laughs> They got steps to Christ. Mm -hmm. So you say, okay, well, where is Christ? They said, oh, he's right here. <laughs> That's what this is saying. No, no, y'all missing it. I'm, examine what you see here. You don't look at this picture and say, this is Cesar Bogier. You don't say that. Right. You say, oh, that's Jesus. That's what they, they're flat out telling you straight up yeah. on the paper. Exactly. They're saying this is Jesus. Steps to Christ. And you say, okay, where's Christ at? You, you're looking at a cracker. Mm -hmm. You're looking at Cesar and Bozier. Talking about that's Jesus. They're flat out giving, they're backing up what we're reading. That's right. Plainly, straight up. Read it again. Read it again. I just said it. And, he had, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. So whose life did they give this, this homosexual? Christ. Christ, Christ. They gave him the life of Jesus. They gave him the life of Christ. So you don't look at this and say, oh, that's Cesar Abogia. You don't say that. You said, oh, that's Jesus. Because they gave the life of Jesus to this maniac. Yeah. And he was a maniac. Okay. See, I didn't, when I said those words, I wasn't just saying those words out of anger. That's just real. When I come up these words here, that's who this man's history is. This guy was notorious mm -hmm. when you read about him. He had sex with his sister. Sex with his own sister and all that. He was, they this was guy was a, everybody. This guy was worse than Charles Manson, held the skeleton. He was yeah. worse than all that. Yeah. When you read some of the books on him, they said it was the age of Antichrist. Okay? Yeah. It was the age of artisan. Because the artist is who they, it tells you when you read the history, Rome hired these artists, Leonardo, Michelangelo were the two main ones, followed by Rembrandt. Okay, you had a whole, they had teams of them to whitewash all the black images and put Caesar's image everywhere. So that way, it would inspire their nation to go forth and conquer us, and it would put fear in all the other nations on earth. That's what they were doing. So the artists played a big part in it. So read that again in 15. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna say that, and when they, were, when they um, had the revealing of the paintings, there were big events, and they would say that they were inspirations that came from God. Exactly. That's how they presented it to the people. That's right, 100% correct. Come on. Verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should, should both speak Stop. That the image of the beast should both speak. Here's another example. Right. Turn it around so they can see. Here's, here's the image of the beast speaking. 
they actually have up under this picture the scripture John 3.16. Yep. So you think that this guy said these words, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. This so is you said this is the son of God. Right. You're saying this is Jesus. Exactly. They're saying he is the one that came down to fulfill the scripture. And spoke these words. And spoke these words. Okay, so that's an example of how this image speaks. Another example of how the image speaks, Ezekiel? Movies. In the movies. Oh, man. You got, uh, I always forget this Edomite's name. Passion of the Christ. Christ. Well, that's another one here. Yeah. Passion of the Christ. They hired that guy. They always, they hired these thin Edomites that look similar to Caesar. You know? They got Jesus of Nazareth. Ten no, not Ten Commandments. That was Moses. King of, Kings. King of Kings, right? King of Kings. They play every Easter. Yeah. Okay. Y'all realize that every actor that they get looks similar to this image here. They have to make it. They don't get Y'all a fat guy. That. They don't get nobody fat. They don't get them with, with black hair. They don't get them. They make them look just like this. Yep. Because that's the image of Caesar. That's right. The image of Caesar Borgia. That's why. Exactly. Read that again, 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Whose life did they give that image, Phil? Right, read. That the image of the beast should both speak. Corey, how does the image speak? They use the scripture to say that that image was the one that came and spoke to birth. How else? Uh, deep by saying he was deep. The movies. The movies. Go ahead. Does your both speak? And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Who can explain that, Hannah and I? Because if they worship Christ, like when it came over here for us, mm -hmm. we worship him, they whipped us until we took it and start worshiping him. Let me ask you a question, Hannah and I. You stay right there. And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. What is that making reference to in this chapter? That making reference to, um... Get live. Verse seven. Verse seven. Read verse seven. Uh, verse seven. Oh, Revelation thirteen, verse seven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome. Them. And to overcome them. Read the bottom of verse fifteen. Verse fifteen. And caused that as many as the as many who, as many of us, as many Israelites. Go ahead. As would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So they were killing us if we didn't worship that image. They were killing our people. Northern and southern kingdom of Israel, they were slaughtering us. Okay? Read on. <coughs> verse, oh, verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, Free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Mm, and he causeth all. He causeth all. He causeth all. In this chapter, what is it making reference to? <clears throat> yes. Verse Abby. eight. Huh? Verse eight. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship. Mm, mm -hmm. Very good. And all that dwell upon the earth. And the bottom of verse 7. Read the bottom of verse 7. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Right. Now, read verse 16 again. When he causeth all, both small and Hope, great. Stop. Read it slow. And he causeth all, both small and Hope. great. Read it slow, you rushing on it. And he calls it all, both small. Both small nations. Go ahead. And great. And great nations. A small nation is called what today? Third world, Third world country. What's a great nation called? <coughs> the free world. Wow. Right, a superpower. The European uh, countries. Go ahead. Rich and poor. Rich nations are called what? You just said it. Same thing. He's saying the same thing. Jonathan, let me use different words. Because Jake don't listen. Right. So you got to say it clearer and clearer. Read it again. And he calls it all, both small. Small nations. And great. And great nations. Rich. Rich nations. And poor. And poor nations. Free. Free. What's a free nation? Give me a free nation. 
America. America. America is the free world. Europe is the free world. Go ahead. And bond. And bond. Those are what? Third world. Third world countries. Go ahead. To receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Now that's the verse we wanted to get through this whole day. Right. Ooh. <laughs> RFID chip. Ooh. RFID chip. What does it stand for? Radio frequency identification. But wait a minute. Is that did that mention? Read it again. And he calls it all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And that no man might buy or sell, save he, he that had the mark. Stop. So the subject is with this particular mark, you can't buy or sell. Can somebody tell me what a radio frequency chip has to do with that? A radio frequency identification is meant as what? A GPS. That's the find location. Where's my dog? A girl, a sister wrote me and said, my dog has an RFID chip. I said, well, maybe he can go buy some land for you. <laughs> Simple as hell. A radio <laughs> frequency Yo, identification oh. chip is like a G it find you can find the location of whoever got that. Yeah. Like in your metro car. You're from your phone, your yeah. phone, your car, whatever you lose, you, you'll find it. Right, Those are chi there's chips in there to low for locations. Now, Galatians 13 verse 16, and he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor. Talking about nations. Free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. So this mark is... Right. This mark is a philosophy, a doctrine. Somebody might jump up and say, hey, prove that it's a philosophy. There's no scriptures. Is there a scripture that talks about that? Yes. Where? Yahshua. Ezekiel 9 and 6. Not that. Nope. Colossians 2 and 8. Colossians 2 and 8. It's going to explain the mark. Have you ever seen people that has had their arms amputated? How are they going to get the chip? Colossians <laughs> 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 2 and 8. Here it comes. You will let any man spoil you. Wait. Read it right so they can understand. Colossians 2 verse 8. Beware. Beware. Be warned. Lest any man. Lest any man. Any man. Any man. Any man. Spoil you. Through philosophy. Through what? Philosophy. Philosophy. And vain deceit. And vain deceit. After. The tradition of men. After the tradition of men. Which men primarily was Paul addressing, making reference to? Anybody know? Was he talking about the Africans? Malachi. The white man. The white man. Rome. Rome, because Rome was in power. So he made it, he made it simple. That's any man. What man? Because you could not come out and say I'm talking about the white man, Rome, because what would have happened? You get killed. Rome didn't play like that. He said, hey, oh, any man, it could be your father. Your Paul was very slick when he spoke. Read Colossians 2 and 8 again. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Mm, watch this, let's go back to Revelation 13. Because somebody said, there's no scripture that talks about philosophy. We just proved you a liar, brother. You could go into the Greek till your head falls off. You will not find a scripture about a chip. And the only chip I'm getting is potato chip. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Ain't gonna be nothing else. <laughs> Read that again. And he calls it chip. <laughs> and he calls it Revelation 13, verse 16. And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor. Rich nations, poor nations. Free and bond. Free nations, bond nations. To receive a mark. To receive a mark. In their right hand. In their right 
hand. Now with your right hand, because somebody might say, why does it say a mark in your right hand? A mark in your right hand. With your right hand, what do you do with terms of doctrines, with terms of philosophy, with your right hand? Yashua? That's when you swear oaths and things like that. You swear oaths with your right hand. You make Isaac, come up, come, 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 come in, come in. Me and uh, Isaac in, a, in an agreement. Stretch out your hand. You stretch out your right hand. What happens if you go to a business meeting and put out your left hand? They look at you funny. They, at you funny. they said, never trust a man that shakes a, an agreement with his left hand. It must always be the right hand. You support with your right hand. You pledge allegiance with your right hand. Okay? You salute with your right hand. You understand that? You give oaths with your right hand. Read that again. Uh, yes. Feel, uh, 16 again. Oh. And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Go ahead. Now, what's in your forehead? Uh, 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 <laughs> brother, I want to be loved. What's your name? Atoma, Atoma. Amara. What's in your forehead? Your brain is in your forehead. So, philosophies and doctrines is up in here. With your right hand, you support them things. You pledge allegiance to them things. You make agreements to them things. Read. And that no, and that no man. And that no man. Might. Now, what type of man is he talking about? Read 16 again. Verse 16 again. And he calls it all, both small. Both small nations. And great. Great nations. Rich. Rich nations. Poor. Poor nations. Free. Free nations. Bond. Bond nations. Read 17 again. And that no man might buy or sell. And that no man might buy or sell. Save he that had the mark. Stop. Save he that had the doctrine, the philosophy. Now you might say, I need a little bit more. That, you know, people always say, I need more. But when, was it, when, that, when, when it was that ship, they didn't need no more. But I'm going to give you some more. Give me first Maccabees. Here's some more precepts for you. Now I'm gonna hit the, I'm gonna, it's gonna come home now. Let's see what Rome did. First Maccabees chapter one. Remember, Rome came from Rome was also called what? Go back in time. Yes. Nope, something else. I want maybe I'm not wording it right. What is Rome all? I'll just say it. Sometimes Rome is called the Greco-Roman Empire because when Rome and Greece was at war, they didn't destroy Greece and forget about them. They, they uh, what's the word? Assimilate. What? Assimilate. They assimilate. They, they merged. merged Greece into Rome. I want you to understand that. It's going to help you in this understanding. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. So now, we're saying that the mark of the beast is philosophies and doctrine. Somebody else is talking about a computer chip. But the Bible says you got to do what? Precept must be upon precept. Here's another precept. First Maccabees 1, 41 to 42. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. He said he wrote to a le the letter to all people that all should be one people. Remember, what this is sounding like is America. One people, read. And everyone should leave his laws. Leave his laws. Whatever land you come from, leave your own personal laws that you go by. So all the heathen agreed. And all the heathens agreed. All I want down is verse 42. According to the commandment of the king. Mm -hmm. That's 42. That was 42? Yes. Now, from there, go to 1 Maccabees chapter 8. I'm going to show you something. 1 Maccabees chapter 8. Because, don't forget, Remember, up in verse 3, it was talking about this nation that came out of the nation who was wounded, right? America came from what? Rome. Rome. First Maccabees chapter 8, verse 1. <coughs> First Maccabees chapter 8, verse 1. Now Judas had heard of the fame of the Romans. So who are we talking about? The Roman Empire. Read. That they were mighty and valiant men, and such as would lovingly accept 
all that joined themselves unto them. I want y'all to pay close attention to that. As such, and would lovingly accept all that joined themselves unto them. This is going to play a key part in your understanding of you cannot buy or sell except you have the mark or the name or the number of the beast. That's super heavy what you're bringing out. Come on. Verse 2. Verse 1 again. No, verse finished. 1 again. Oh, now Judas had heard of the fame of the Romans, that they were mighty and valiant men, and such as would lovingly accept all that joined themselves unto them, and make a league of amity with all that came unto them. So you want to highlight that part there. You might ask yourself, well, what does this got to do with it? It's going to play a big part. Jump down to verse 11 to 13. I'm going to get to the key points. Y'all can read the rest of the history on your own. 11 through 13. Verse Maccabees 8, verse 11. It was told him besides how they destroyed and brought under their dominion all other kingdoms and isles that at any time resisted them. This is what we were reading in Revelation 13. Go ahead. But with their friends, but with their friends, and such as relied upon them, they kept amity. They kept friendship. They kept league of agreements. Go ahead. And that they had conquered kingdoms both far and nigh, and so much as all that heard of their name were afraid of them. Come on. Also, that whom they would help to a kingdom, those reigned. Whoever Rome wanted to help to a kingdom, those were the leaders they set up. Go ahead. And whom again they would, they displaced. And whoever they decided to take down, they displaced them. Right, that's that embargo, right? right? Yeah. Finally, that they were greatly exalted. Finally, that they were greatly exalted. Let's go back now to Revelation 13. So we're showing you the attributes of Rome. Which, what? later on, became known today as the United States of America. Revelation 13, 16 again. Revelation 13, verse 16. And he called it all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. So this mark is their philosophies, their doctrines, their, what is it, what do they call it? Their, mm, give me another word for America's, policies. You might hear the word in the news, their Diplomatic policies. Mm -hmm. Those are the words you hear in the news, go ahead. And that no man might buy or sell. Give me another word for buy or sell. I want one word that discusses, that uses, that expresses buy or sell. Steve. Trade. Trade. That no man can trade except what? And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark. So now stop, you might say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> is that really what this is talking about? Trade, buying and selling, trade. Yes, give me a precept, Ezekiel. Ezekiel 28, verse four and five. You need some words, these words are gonna help you. You don't gotta go to the Greek or the Latin to come up with a computer chip. You crazy? Ezekiel 28, verse 4 and 5. Come on. Ezekiel 28, verse 4. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches. See that? Thou hast gotten thee riches. Read. Thou hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. Mm, go ahead. By thy great wisdom. By thy great wisdom. And by thy traffic. And by thy traffic. Can we look up that word traffic? I think this is the one you want. The transportation of goods for the purpose of trade. That's by it. sea, yeah. land, or air. Y'all see that? Read that bottom of that one again, Yahshua, again. The transportation of goods for the purpose of trade by sea, land, or air. Now the term the Bible uses for trade is what? Traffic. Traffic, traffic. traffic. what else in Revelation? Buy and sell. Buy and sell. Buy and sell. That's what traffic is making reference to in Ezekiel 28. Yes. In the documentary, documentary we referenced before in the movie Even the Rain. Yeah. And the other one with the um, that Esau said he was the devil. Was that the, uh... <clears throat> when you get your thought, come back. 
No, Thank you. And even the rain, they um, they force they they are American companies control foreign interests. Right. So the food the people eat, the sanitation, everything that they need is dependent on American companies. Exactly. Exactly. End of poverty. Yes, end as of a poverty. end of poverty. Yes, that's the name of it. Yeah, also, if any of these nations try to go outside of what's put down, they put an embargo on them. We get into that. Let's go right back to Revelation 13 and 16 again. We get there. Okay. Revelation 13, verse six, uh, 17 and 16. 16 and 17. 16 again. And he calls of all. He calls of all nations. The all is making reference to nations. Go ahead. Both small. Small nations. And great. Great nations. Rich. Rich nations. And poor. Poor nations. Free. Free nations. And bond. Bond nations. To receive a mark. That mark is their philosophy, their policies, their doctrines. Go ahead. In their right hand. In their right hand because in your right hand you support it. You pledge allegiance to it. Go ahead. Or in their forehead. In your forehead you believe it. Go ahead. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark. And that no man might buy or sell, meaning, and that no man might, give me another word? Trade. Trade, Trade or traffic, save he that had the mark. We just read that. Go back to Maccabees. Go right back to Maccabees. First Maccabees chapter 8. What we read, what Rome would do. Verse 1? No, not verse 1. I want to one about whom they set up or displace that verse. 11. First Maccabees 8, verse 11. It was told him besides how they destroyed and brought under their dominion all other kingdoms and isles that at any time resisted them. But with their friends and such as relied upon them, they kept amity. And that they had conquered kingdoms both far and nigh, and so much as all that heard of their name were afraid of them. Here's the point, verse 13. Also that whom they would help to a kingdom, those reign. So if Rome was in agreement with you, you would reign, right? And in, in whom again they would, they displaced. If you were not in agreement with Rome's policy, you were removed. What does America do today? Let's think about it. They put an embargo on you. You don't, like they just put one on um. Iran, they said, you don't want to do what we say? Let's put an embargo on you. What does that mean, an embargo? Mm -hmm. Yeah, look it up. That's embargo. That's like, oh. black, that's like blacklisting you. What does it mean? Tell the other nations, don't trade with them. Right, you can't trade. You can't buy or sell. You understand it? A sanction is only on an item. Like with a country, let's say I make this, and you mad at me about something, they'll say, I'll put a sanction on your orange sharpies. But an embargo is on the whole country. Nobody can't do business with you, can't buy from you, can't trade with you. Read it again. 13, also, Revelation 13. Oh, Revelation 13, 16 and 17 verse 16. again. And he called it all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, and that no man might trade. No man can trade. Go ahead. Save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast. The name of the beast is Babylon the Great, America today. Or the number of his name. And as we read down, it's 666. That's the number that represents them. So this is talking about embargoes. This is not talking about, brother, I want to buy a, a Snickers bar, and I don't have a chip in my hand. Can you go to the store and buy me a Snickers bar? Ain't talking about that. That's just Negro jailhouse foolishness. That ain't gonna stop a Negro from getting a Snickers bar anyway. Yeah. Exactly. So, this is ridiculous. This is really crazy that we even have to deal with. Right. Let's get some more precepts. Put your hands down. Let's get some more precepts for causing all to receive. Number. Revelation 13 and 17. 16 again. 16 again. And he calls it, and he calls it all. Notice it says all. Go ahead. And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Or in their foreheads. Go ahead. And that no man might buy or sell. And that no man might traffic, trade, save he that had the mark. He that had the philosophy, the policies of America. Or the name of the beast. Or the name of the beast. Babylon the Great, you got to be under America's umbrella. Just like we read in Maccabees. You had to be in some kind of league with Rome. Go ahead. 
or the number of his name. Let's get some more precepts. Because somebody, I, I need more precepts. Well, here's some more. Let's go to Revelation 18. For the doubting Thomases. We're going to smash it tonight. Ask them chip brothers for a precept in the Holy Bible. In English. In English. You'll see about that. Now you're the devil. Now you're rebellious. Yeah, now, you, okay. now, now you got the chip. Yeah, you got the chip. That's why you're asking that. Hey, and when they watch this video, they're going to wait till you get to the word the and say, you see, you didn't break down the. <laughs> <laughs> the Greek the see? means the chip. You see, he's trying to be slick. It exactly. says no, he didn't say what the means. So now, you want to know what more precepts on Revelation 13, verse 16 and 17 about the mark in your head, the mark in your right hand that you can't buy or sell, meaning trade or traffic. Revelation 18 sums it up. Let's go to Revelation 18. Hey, Elder, also, be careful with your fingers. Bro. Oh, yeah, you right. know how they like your fingers. Yes. You're a damn devil. You talk like this. <laughs> yeah, brother. Yeah, talk with your hands closed. <laughs> So if you put the fist, see, that's that Farrakhan kind of stuff. You yeah, see? pick a finger, pick a finger! <laughs> Let's get the script. Revelation 18 and 3. Watch this. Uh, watch this. Stop watching Scooby Doo, fellas. Exactly. Watch Revelation this. 18, what? Verse 3. Verse 3. For all nations. Stop. Have... For all nations. All nations. Remember, we read in Revelation 3, it said it causes all. And I told y'all it's talking about nations. Here's. The proof is talking about nations. Read. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Let's stop right there. Because now, John the Revelator is using different words. He's not no longer using the word mark. He's using the word what? Wine. Hmm. Where will we go to explain why? I'm off. Micah 2 and 11. Let's go there real quick. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So this fornication is the wine that the nations have drunk. Let's find out what it is. Because remember I said philosophy. The Bible's talking about philosophies, doctrines. Give me another word for philosophy. Give me an easier word. One word that has three letters in it. <laughs> Leon. Um, sin. 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 Now, where are we at? Micah 211. Micah 211 to explain why. In English. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie. If a man walking in the spirit of falsehood do lie. Sing. I will prophesy unto thee of wine. Saying, I will prophesy to thee of wine. So Robert, what is this wine talking about in that verse? Look in the verse. You're looking at me. I want to look at the verse. Y'all need to be able to explain this on your own. Isaac. Falsehood and lies. Falsehood and lies. Read it again, I thought for him. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine. So that wine translates to lies and falsehood, according to Micah 2. Y'all see that? Yes. Okay, let's go back to Revelation 18. And 3 again. Revelation 18, verse 3. For all nations, all nations, have drunk of the wine. Have drunk of the lies. Have drunk of the lies, the falsehood. Have drunk of what did Colossians 2 and 8 call it? Philosophies, Philosophies doctrines of men, vain deceit. Read it again. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Her fornication is her lies. Her fornication is her vain deceit. Her fornication is what? Her sin. It's all talking about the same thing. Go ahead. Um, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It says, and the kings. Is that one king? And the kings. Kings of the earth. So you think this is talking about a Negro trying to buy a Snickers bar? It ain't talking about that. It's talking about the kings of the earth. Read it again. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. They all were in agreement with America's policies, her philosophies, go ahead. And the merchants of the earth. Uh, 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 uh. And the merchants 
of the earth. What do merchants do? Trade. 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 Buy and sell. Merchandise. Merchandise. Export. Import. Read it again. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacy. Y'all see that? Jump down in the same chapter to verse 8. Let's, let's, we gotta finalize this thing. Jump down. Pay close attention. This is gonna help y'all with the mark and the buying and selling. Right here. 18 verse 11? 18 verse 8. I wanna start there. Oh, verse 8. Revelations 18 verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. So strong is the Lord God who judges her. So John sees in a vision the destruction of Babylon the Great, the destruction of America. Read, watch this. And the king. And the kings. Of the earth. Of the earth. Who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her. Wait, 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 stop. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication. Remember we read that up in verse what? Verse 3. It said about the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Which broke down to what was the wine? Their lies, their falsehood. Read verse 9 again. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her and they shall see the smoke of her burn and the merchants of the earth now we get into the buying and selling and the merchants of the earth come on shall weep and mourn over her watch this for no man buyeth Ooh, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore their merchandise and you want to highlight that for no man buyeth no man's training, no traffic no more. Come on. The merchandise of gold. Now John gonna break down to you what merchandise they were dealing with. The merchandise of gold. And silver. And silver. And precious stones. Precious stones. And a pearl. Pearl. Fine linen. Fine linen. Purple. Purple. Silk. Silk. Scarlet. Scarlet. Thine wood. Thine wood. All men of vessels of ivory. Mm -hmm. And all men of vessels of most precious wood. Mm -hmm. And of brass. And iron, and marble, come on, and cinnamon, cinnamon, and odors, and odors, and ointments, and ointments, frankincense, frankincense, wine, wine, oil, oil, fine flour, fine flour, wheat, wheat, beasts, beasts, sheep, sheep, horses, horses, chariots, chariots, and slaves, and slaves. So that has taken the Israelites out of the equation. You ain't buying or trading yourselves. It was the nations that was buying us. It was the nations trading us. We were included in the merchandise. Read that bottom part again. And slaves and souls of men. And souls of men because they were indoctrinating us. Everybody see that? Yes. So this, oh, the chip in you, that's garbage. That's not what God's talking about. Okay? From there. Yeah. Verse, uh, wait, 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 wait. Verse Let's 14. go down. Keep reading, keep reading. Yeah. Watch this. Verse 14. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee. And all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee. And thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her. Mm -hmm. They got rich off us too. We were the slaves. Go ahead. Shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment. Weeping and wailing, come on, and saying, "Alas, alas! That great city that was clothed in fine linen, and purple and scarlet, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, for in one hour so great riches is come to naught." Watch this! Watch this! Uh -huh. And every <coughs> ship master. Every? How do we get over here? Ships. ships! Come on! And all the company in ships, and sailors, and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. What is the word in that verse for buy and sell? Trade. 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 Ezekiel used the word traffic. Precept must be upon precept. That way you will never be deceived. If you, if we just hold on to what God, how he taught us to read the Bible, we're going to be good. We're going to be safe, brothers. But if you leave the Bible and go to some Greek, Latin language, you're going you to get lost. You're going to get lost. Right, you're gonna get bit by the zombies.
<laughs> Got the Negro gonna sit there. What Negroes are doing trade business? Exactly. It, it, there's no That's black. There's no black right. toothpick factory, <laughs> toilet paper. It, there's none of that. We don't do trade and business. You don't see all the Negroes doing that. All that we do is consume. <laughs> exactly. When we, we, we make the winter. Yeah. Negroes, Negroes trade bullets. <laughs> well, I see and land. Each other down. Well, I see and land. Right. So these, so, mm -hmm. these simple brothers, right, that are waiting for the mark of the beast. They're going to wait long because what we just read there, the mark of the beast been around ever since slavery. That's right. Ever since slavery, the mark of the beast came around. Okay, so the brothers that are waiting for that, they're going to they gonna just keep waiting because the mark of the beast is already here. All right, it's already here. Exactly. So, yes, your size. And I'll, I'll give you a popular example. Um, Japan and China, they tried to keep the beast out for a while, but eventually they broke down the wall and, and, and he, he burned the, almost burned their city down to get in. Exactly. To buy and sell. <laughs> yep. Oh, the, okay, now, what, bear with me a second. Bear with me a second. Revelation 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his any man worship the beast and his image and his image and receive his mark in his forehead, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, or in his hand to support, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, mm -hmm. which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Come on. And he shall be tormented with fire. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone, in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Go ahead. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So now, for the Israelites, somebody's talking about the mark of the beast. If you take it, you'll be destroyed in a lake of fire. Give me a scripture that tells us what will give us. I'm, I, want, I need y'all to learn how to precept. This says if you take the mark or his image, right? Mark of the image, what else? Mark the image, and then whoever receives the mark of his name, you're going to be tormented. You're going to go into the lake of fire, right? Give me another scripture that discusses that and sums it up. I'm going to give it to you. Let me give it to you. Romans 6.23. I'm going to see if y'all can see it. Get that? Romans 6.23. The it's the bottom of it. Is it verse 23? Yep. That's it? Yep. That's it. Romans 6, verse 23. Watch there. All I want to read the whole thing, but it's the bottom precept I want y'all to see. Mm -hmm. So the wages of mm. sin is death. Do y'all see that? The wages of sin is death. Sin. When you read the other books in the Bible, you're not going to read the mark of the beast. Or is it, you're not going to read that. The other prophets use the word sin. That's why your mind's got to be opened up. That's why it says precept must be upon precept. Sin is what's going to get you deaf. Y'all understand that? Read the whole verse. For the wages of sin is death. That's the part I wanted. But go ahead. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So what gets us deaf? Sin. In the book of Revelation, it says, if you worship the beast or his image or got his mark on you, you're going to be cast into the lake of fire. That's death. Sin. Sin. Because America says, you, in this country, we have freedom to do what we want. You got organizations called NAMBLA fighting called North American North American Man Boy Love Association in court fighting for the right for grown men to have sex with little boys. Man, what? Man. You have things, you have things called zoo, where women are having sex with animals. Mm -hmm. They go zoo. They go zoo. They call it are you, they say, are you zoo? You go, I'm zoo. Got one in Seattle. Right, they got one in Seattle. There's religions that allow you to worship the devil. The spiritual demons say Luciferians. Luciferians, right. And you can commit adultery, you can be homosexual. What this whole System is about sin, but John doesn't call it that. John the Revelator says the mark of the beast, the image of his name, it's all sin now. It's all sin. But that buying and selling, brothers, is talk of the mark in terms of buying and selling is trade. 
It's traffic for the nations. Y'all understand that? Yes. So don't get it confused. Yes, say so. Even with the foolish philosophies that the elder just brought out, they announced today on the news that there's a church that set up a tattoo parlor inside of it. Y'all heard about that? Wow. The head of the church says that he doesn't see anything wrong with them and he wants to break away from the contemporary churches. Y'all can look it up, they announced it today. It was on 1010 Wins and CNN. Mm. And what he did was he put a, a first church ever with a tattoo parlor inside of it. Mm. Check that out. That's how evil this man has right. got. Watch this. Wait a minute, are there any Bibles in this church? <laughs> I just want to know, did they, did they during the uh, discourse of the program, did they mention that there was a Bible? Bro, I wanted to, because there's already a blog being started over it, because no Negro don't know in the scriptures where it says don't print any marks upon that's, you, that's so we can go that. in. Okay, the world does not understand that there's a scripture that forbids tattoos. So everybody's praising it as it's a good thing. It's change being brought to America. Right. We're leaving the contemporary church. Exactly. Watch this. Ezekiel 9 and 4. Let's talk about the Most High God for a second. <clears throat> Ezekiel 9 and 4. Actually, before we get to Ezekiel 9, get me Psalms 137 about our right hand. The right hand. I'm going to show you the flip side of the coin with God. Because God talks about having a mark in your head, but in righteousness, and your right hand in righteousness. Psalms 137, what verse Verse 5. Verse 5. Psalms 137, verse 5. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, meaning if I forget my nationality, if I forget my origin, my birthplace, uh -huh. let my right hand forget her cunning. Let my right hand forget her cunning. Let my right hand, meaning what? I'll forget about God's commandments. I'll forget how to do what the most high God says if I forget who I am. Read it again. If I forget the old Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. So that's what the Bible talks about with the Israelites. If we forget who we are, our right hand is going to forget her cunning. Because with our right hand, we pledge allegiance to the most high God. We support what this Bible says. We forgot all that. Okay, now watch this, Ezekiel 9 and 4. I, that deals with the, your right hand in righteousness. But we went off. Watch Ezekiel 9 and 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. What is in our foreheads? Our minds. our minds. Our minds, our brains. What is the mark in your brain, in your mind, that will cause you <coughs> to sigh and to cry for all the abominations that be done thereof? Ezekiel. The laws. The laws. Because if you don't know the laws, how can you sigh and cry? Right. You don't know what the abominations are. Right. Give me an example of an abomination. Oh, um, homosexuality. What does it say? Uh, well, According to the laws of God, homosexuality is, is forbidden. It's an abomination. Yes. But if you're not studying the laws or keeping them, you, you would think it's okay to fall into that. Give me another abomination. Phil. Women wearing pants. Women wearing pants. Ooh. Everybody stop, huh? Yeah. That's an abomination. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. That's right. For all that do so are what? Abomination. An abomination. Women dress like men, men dress like women. God says that's an abomination. Adultery. Abomination. So in discord amongst brethren that are at peace. Abomination. Yes, somebody had their hand up back there. Yes. Yes, that's an abomination. <laughs> Watch this. Um, bear with me a second. Give me Hebrews 8 and 10. Wait, wait, stay in Ezekiel 9. I'm sorry. Let's just read down from verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Stop. In Revelation, there's a scripture where, I don't want to give it away, that says the same thing. 
where God says, set a mark on the men that sigh and that cry. Court. Revelation 11? No. Zechariah. Revelation, Revelation 7. Get that? Yeah, I'm sorry. Get that? I want you. That's why the Bible says precept must be upon precept. All the prophets did not use the same wording. Because John didn't use the word mark when it came to the righteous. He used another word. Revelation 7 and 4 or 3? 2. 7 and two. Uh, two. 2. Okay. The book of Revelation chapter 7 verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Y'all see that? That's the same thing Ezekiel 9 is talking about. But Ezekiel used the word mark. That mark is that seal. Well, how do we prove the seal? Where do we, where do we go? Leon. Um, Isaiah 8 and 16. Isaiah 8 and 16. Let's get it. I hope y'all writing this down. I know it might be a bit much for some of you. But if you go through your notes, day in and day out, you're going to get it. Isaiah 8, 16. Line up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. Y'all see that? Seal the law. That's what's in your forehead. The law got to be there. Let's go back to Ezekiel 9. Ezekiel 9 verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sign that cry, for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Come on. And to the others he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city, and smite, that not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young. The word slay means kill. Kill utterly old people. Go ahead. And young. And young. Both maids. Both young girls. And little children. And little. See, God don't care. He will kill your little kids. Go ahead. And women. And women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. Mm. That's the question. What is the mark that these men are going to have? That these people are going to have? Ah. Ezekiel. Lord. The laws, because that's how they're gonna know what the abominations are. Exactly. Okay. That's how they're gonna know. It ain't got nothing to do with something stuck in your in your head. That's. I can't believe that that's a doctrine. I really can't. And they, the doctrine, if y'all don't look at it, but I I, I did, but it ain't gonna affect me. Some of y'all be like <laughs> zombies. <laughs> Jack Van Impey got a whole series on the mark of the beast. Is the RFID chip. Alex Jones got a series on the Mark of the Beast. It's the RFID chip. It's straight up madness. Madness. Could you, could you do me a favor? Could you go back to Romans 6 and 23? Because when he read it the first time, I was like, wow. Because we just read in Ezekiel where he pointed out that the abominations is what the sin is. Mm -hmm. And we just read that the Most High said for the angels to don't come and kill any one of us that have the mark of God in their head. That's what that Ezekiel was talking about. Read it. Romans 6 verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. That's the abominations that Ezekiel was talking about. Mm -hmm. That's why he said kill them. The wages of the abominations is death. Mm -hmm. That's why the angels went and slayed utterly old and young. Exactly. Read. But the gift of God is eternal life. But the Jesus. mark of God, that's why it says, come not near any man upon whom have the mark of God. Read the rest of it. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's the mark that Revelation was talking about. Exactly. When it says sealed, what is that? Until we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. In their foreheads. So don't be confused by this madness. Exactly. Yeah, yeah you notice how mighty Mosai is? Because guess what? Our people is not, we search this battle. So how would they know what sin is? How would they know America is the most demonic place? They would not know. They would think America is okay. Because they're looking at America through good cars, good houses, good everything. But then they don't look at America through more. America won't be destroyed for more. You understand? That's what God says, sin. 
You understand? It's not that for money. God doesn't deal like that. For more, that's how America gonna be destroyed. I gotta say this. I don't, I don't care who get mad either. I gotta say <laughs> If everybody's looking for a chip, that means nobody's paying attention to the sin that they're in. That's, that's right. right. That's the whole purpose of this, this dogma. Um, doctrine that's going out here right. is to take your mind away from being conscious of what sin is. Right. Okay, because if you're busy looking for some electric chip in your brother's head, you're not even going to pay attention to the sins that you yourself might be committing. Right. Pedophilia. Pedophilia, like all that, that garbage. Nobody would look to see you wicked as hell. Nobody would look to say that because they're busy. Oh, as long as you don't have the chip, you're righteous. Exactly. And you're full of demons. Now, remember, watch this. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna give you a little few more precepts. I ain't done with the precepts now. Revelation 13, where's that part about the right hand? Revelation 13, verse 16. And he calls it, and he calls it all. So who is this all making reference to, brothers? All nations. Nations, very good, go ahead. Both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand. Now I want you to look at, I'm gonna deal with the right hand for a second, go ahead. Or in their forehead. Go ahead. And that no man might buy or sell. Give me another word for buy or sell. Trade. Trade, Trade or traffic. traffic. Very good. Watch this. Get me Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, 27 verse 2. Write this down. Ecclesiasticus 27 and verse it's the bottom half. We read the whole thing. Verse 2. Ecclesiasticus 27, verse 2. The bottom part of the whole thing. Read the whole thing. As a nail sticketh fast between the join, joinings of the stones, so doth sin stick close between buying and selling. You see that? So doth sin stick between buying and selling. Buying and selling. So sin is right there. Y'all see that? Watch this, here's another one. Get uh, Psalms. Psalms 26. Psalms 26, we want verse 9 and 10. Psalm 26, verse 9. Gather not my soul with sinners. Gather not my soul with sinners. So as we read this, the service of the Most High are not to be joined with sinners. What does sin mean, get alive? Break the law. Brothers, sisters, anybody who's willingly breaking the commandments. David said, gather not my soul with sinners. Go ahead. Nor my life with bloody men. Come on, watch this. In whose hands is mischief. In whose hands is mischief, watch this. And their right hand is full of bribes. And their right hands is full of bribes. Their right hand is full of bribes, meaning deceit. Y'all understand that? Because in Esau's business world, remember we read in uh, Ecclesiasticus, sin is not far from buying and selling. Why? Because they're doing backroom deals. That's why it says in whose right hand is bribes. That's what's going on in the government. No matter how high or low you go, in the government, there's buying and selling, there's traffic and trade, bribes, wickedness, okay? From there, let's go to, uh, we're almost done. Go back to Revelation 13 again, verse 17. Revelation 13. And I want y'all to look at verse seven, let me look at it real quick. Yes, 17. Revelation 13, verse 17. Yeah. Verse 17, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark. Now we know what the mark is. What is the mark, brothers? Sin. 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 Philosophy, according to Colossians what? Two and eight. Two and eight. Okay. Buy or sell is talking about what? Trade. 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 And traffic. According to what? Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. What else? Sirach 27. How about y'all forgot Revelation 18? Okay. Make sure y'all got these things in your notes. Okay, what did I say go? Revelation 13, 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, 
with a number of his name. Okay, which is the 666. And that 666 is not a numeric breakdown. Let me look in your head. Oh, the first six represents the I. It ain't talking about that. That's just a nick term, nickname term for Esau. That's all it is. Watch this. Give me first Maccabees 8 again. This is why the book of Maccabees was, and the Apocrypha itself was taken out of the Bible. Damien. I want verse 13, then I want 27 to 29. First Maccabees 8, verse 13. First Maccabees 8. Verse 13. Then we're up to First Maccabees 8, verse 13. Okay. Verse 13. All first Maccabees 8, verse 13. Also that whom they would help to a kingdom, those reign. So whoever Rome helped to a kingdom, they <laughs> reign. Go ahead. And whom again they would, they displaced. So if you didn't agree with Rome's policies, you were displaced. Okay? America does what? They put what on you? Embargo. Embargoes. The same thing Rome was doing. Go ahead. Finally, they that were greatly exalted. Finally, that they, that they were greatly exalted. exalted. Jump down to verse 27 to 29. Verse 27. In the same manner also, if war come first upon the nation of the Jews. Now this is what Rome said to Judah Maccabee. Listen to their wording. The Romans shall help them with all their heart, according as the time shall be appointed them. Come on. Neither shall vittles be given to them that take part against them. Stop right there. We're going to pause. I want this to marinate in your brains, in your minds. Remember, in Revelation 13, it said, if you didn't have the mark, you cannot buy or sell. Remember we read that? Now, I'm showing you a precept where if anybody did not follow Rome's policy, this is what they did to him. Read it again from 27. In the same manner also, if war come first upon the nation of the Jews, the Romans shall help them with all their heart, according as the time shall be appointed them. Here it come. Neither shall victuals be given to them that take part against them, or weapons, or money, or ships, as it has seemed good to the Romans. What are we reading about? Trade. We're not going to help those nations. That's how Rome got down. That's why in Revelation 13, when it talked about that other beast that came out of that other, um, what's the word, what's the word, what's the word? The first, the first beast, it's the same policy. Read it again, I thought for him. 27 again. Read from 28 and 29. 28. Neither shall vittles be given to them that take part against them, or weapons, or money, or ships, as it, been, as it has seemed good to the Romans, but they shall keep their covenants. They shall keep their covenants, their agreements. And that without deceit. Go okay. ahead. According to these articles, did the Romans make a covenant with the people of the Jews? Y'all see this? So if anybody did not follow Rome's policy, you could not buy or sell. You could not trade or traffic. They said, we won't give them weapons. We won't give them food. We won't give them ships or money. An embargo. That's an embargo. That's the same thing Revelation 13 is talking about with America. And these are the precepts to prove it. So if you are that ignorant, anybody in here, you that dumb to follow some chip, some computerized radio frequency identification chip, shame on you. You are dumb as hell. And there's no, we can't help you. You got bit. You got bit by the zombies. <laughs> you are no cure. RFID chip, RFID chip. <laughs> Not a simple. There's no precepts in the Bible about that. Don't be deceived by weak-minded jailhouse Negroes. Everybody understand what I said? Yes. yes. All right. ASAP, you wanted to touch on something. I got one scripture I want to bring up. Go ahead. Um, it's, this is Thessalonians, right? This is another scripture that explains that the mark of the beast is sin, all right? Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 10. I tell you, you can read it for me. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 10. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 10? Yeah. Sorry about that, bro. 
So brothers, you have to put this in your notes, all right? This is another scripture that explains that the mark of the beast is sin, all right? Second Thessalonians 2 verse 10. Yeah. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. So you all see that? With all deceivableness of unrighteousness. What's another word for unrighteousness? All right, read it again, Aita. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. So with all deceivableness and sin. All right, read on. Of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. So those of our people that's gonna be that's gonna perish, that got a mark of the beast, that gonna be perish, that gonna perish, and because they were deceived in unrighteousness. Right. They were deceived in sin. They was deceived in the white man way of life, in his Christianity. That's right. They were deceived in um how the white man changed the law on the Sabbath from what, Saturday to Sunday, they are deceived, thinking that they don't got to keep God's laws no more. That's it. That's All right? That's right. Yeah, and some of our brothers is also deceived that the RFD chip is the mark of the beast. That's also a deceivableness in unrighteousness. It's a Christian doctrine. All right? Right. Watch this. Get Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. Watch this. I know I'm keeping y'all a bit long, but just want to touch on this real quick. You got like brothers after today, I ain't going over this no more. I ain't gonna touch it for a long time. So don't come over, oh, I'm confused. You gotta wait for the next slew of brothers to come up in here. Then I'll touch it again. But this group right here, I ain't going over this no more with y'all. You can't be a bit neither, we'll lock you out the door. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. The thing that hath been is that which shall be. And that which is done. And that which is done upon the earth. Is that which shall be done. Huh, okay. Where is that written in the New Testament? Oh. It's similar. It's not using the same words. I always I always quote it. I always paraphrase it. Tell me. It ain't saying it. it's. Let me not say it's saying the exact same thing. It's not. But it's very similar. Give me Romans 15 and 4. Y'all might like it. That's what you had? Okay, you good, bro. You good, bro. You read my thoughts there. Read my thoughts there. Watch this. Romans 15. Now, you know why you want Ecclesiastes 1 and 9? Because the things that was done in the past is the things that's going to be done now. Meaning, God was angry with our people in the past, right? Right. Why did he kill everybody on the earth? Sin. 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 Did he kill everybody on the earth except Noah and his family? Because of a computer chip. Uh, no, no. The thing that was done in the past is that which shall be done. Come on. Romans 15 verse 4. For whatso whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You're going to have hope and comfort if you let your learning be in the Bible. Once you leave the scriptures and you go into another language to get a different breakdown, you are lost. You are lost. Yeah, man. Can I can I say something on that, brother? Yeah. Uh, uh, when you went in the scripture in uh, first, is it actually first and nine, right? Let me ask you a question, brother Isaac. Why why was Babylon destroyed? Why why God destroyed? Babylon was destroyed because of the sin. Okay. Why was the uh, media and a Persian destroyed. Who know? <coughs> Go ahead. Because of their sin. Because of sin, right? Yeah. Why was the Greek were destroyed? Same thing. Same. But now in America is a different philosophy. Yeah, it's by the chips. Right. Let me all get simple. That's simple to believe them. Here's another scripture for the mark of the beast. Watch this. First John three and eight. They say if you got the mark of the beast, you're the devil. Let's see what God says. Like I said, John the Revelator in the book of Revelations, he used different words. He used metaphors. He used similitudes. So if, you're, if you don't understand Genesis to Jude, because they didn't use the term mark of the beast. They use other terms. 
First John 3 verse 8. Let's read that. First John 3 verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. So what's the word there for the mark? Sin. 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 You are of the devil. Then, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. Remember what Cain? Yep. Okay. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So Christ was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Remember in Revelation, he called the devil what? A beast with seven heads and ten horns. Come on. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Meaning willful sin. Whoever is born of God, meaning born what? Again, again. Born again. Whoever is born again does not willingly go out and commit sin. Go ahead. For his seed remaineth in him. For his seed. God's seed is what? His laws. His laws remain in you. Go ahead. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. He cannot sin, meaning willingly sin, because he is born again. He is born of God. Read. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. So in this understanding of God's laws, it's two things manifest, the children of God and the children of the devil. Go ahead. Whosoever do doeth not righteousness is not of God. Whoever does not do, what is God's righteousness? The Lord's. Where will we go to prove that? Deuteronomy 6 and 25. Deuteronomy 6, 25. That proves that God's laws is his righteousness. Read that again, I thought. Um, in this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness... Whoever does not do God's laws... Is not of God. Is not of God. Go ahead. Neither he that loveth not his brother. In the case you forgot, he said, neither he that does not love his brother. So that spirit of hatred, one for another, we cannot have up in here. For any of our brothers, for any of our sisters, yes, that includes the black woman. We cannot hate the black woman. That's against God's laws. Yes, you can you can get mad, it's okay. The scripture says, be ye angry. Sin not. And sin not. Yes, Amad. Deuteronomy. Let's get it. Deuteronomy 6.25 for him. Okay. It, it explains righteousness. Because somebody might think righteousness is just being nice to people. I feed the homeless three times a week. That's the righteousness of God. Was oh, that right? Deuteronomy 6 verse 25. Deuteronomy 6 verse 25 And it shall be our righteousness if we, if we observe to do all these commandments Before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us Y'all see that? Everybody understand that? So don't let nobody tell you that righteousness is something else You have scriptures to prove it Okay? That's why remember uh Deacon Malachi read that scripture. Go back to that what he read in 2 Thessalonians 2 and, 10. 2 and 10. Read that again. Because like I told y'all, the prophets use different words to explain the same thing. They use different words. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 10 again. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. Wait. Give me an easy word for deceivableness. Because you see, that's hard for a Negro Latino. Deceivableness, easy word. Break that word down. Phil. Lies. Lies. Deceit. The root of that is deceit. And with all deceit, go ahead. And with all deceivableness. Of, Which means deceit. Of unrighteousness. So wait, wait, wait. If righteousness is what? Keeping the laws. So what is unrighteousness? Not keeping, Not keeping God's laws. Read it again. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth. What's the love of the truth? What is the truth? The law. Where would you go to prove that the truth is the law? Phil. No. Uh, Bezalel. Psalms 119, 142. Let's get that real quick. Psalms 119, verse 142. Because somebody might say, you got, some of us think, I know I'm Israel. That's all I need to know. I'm good. My seed is in the kingdom. Just because I know I'm Israel. Judas Iscariot knew he was Israel too. Yes, sir. Dathan, Kor, and Anime was Israel too. Our forefathers that came out of Egypt that were killed by God knew they was Israel too. Exactly. 
Yep, they will deceive. Read that, read that. Psalms 119 verse 142. We go in here to explain the truth. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. Y'all see that? God's law is the truth. His law is the truth. Now, John 14 and 6. I'm going to end it here. I'm adding the law with Christ in this. In case, not in case. Come on. Because some of you might have doubts about the Savior. Give me that. John 14 verse 6. Is that what I want? Yes, sir. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If anybody in here, listen good, y'all on the internet too. Christ said he's the way, what did it say? Say it again, read again. I am the way, the truth. Christ is the truth, the truth. Because when he came, guess what he was teaching? The laws. The laws. The laws. He didn't come to preaching no Illuminati stuff. He sure. preached the laws. Go ahead. I am the way, the truth, and the light. I want you sisters to pay close attention to this. Go ahead. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You got some Israelite groups that say you can get to the Heavenly Father without Christ. That's not biblical. That's impossible. 